Hello everyone. Research in medical school is a very integral part, but due to lack of guidance in the initial years of MBBS, many students could not pursue that path. So this is something which is very undiscovered and we thought that we should, you know, share with you some more insights on how you can do research as a medical student right from your first year as well, right? So this is all about an interest and we have with us a very special guest. We have Aranya Arora, who is a third year medical student from Government Medical College, Bangalore. And she is someone, you know, who you can directly look forward to as a research candidate. She has been in actively involved in research right from her first year. She also presented her paper at Ames New Delhi. She received her university research grant in second year. And also among the many, uh, you know, achievements that she had in this particular field, she has also been selected for CSIR, CCMB Hyderabad, as well as internship research at IISC Bangalore. So there are many more accolades to her, which I'll pin in the description. So welcome Ananya to the show. And I hope that all the juniors listening to you will really be enlightened with your research experience. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me. And I do hope people, you know, get help from this video. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, so Ananya, uh, like, you know, we will be starting from very basics that how, you know, one who is suppose a first year medical student with no idea whatsoever, how they should start approaching the research criteria. And some students feel that it's not that necessary to do research. Obviously, it's not an obligation. It's totally up to you. But it is something which enhances your, you know, uh, clinical skills as well as thinking skills related to particular topics. So we'll learn about that. So, you know, in the quotes of Michael Scott, as he said that, why don't you explain me this thing like I'm a five, right? So this is what we want to learn from you that suppose we are fifth class student and we want to know ki how to go for research. So start from very basic that how one can start. All right. So um, I think for, like, first question is that uh, should you get into research, right? Yeah. So I think that is very uh, subjective and that depends on a single person. Uh, it depends on your interest. It depends on if you want to get into it, especially if you're not uh, aiming for, you know, uh, broad exams, for example, PLAB in USMLE. Then I think you can um, think about it once again. But if you're interested in a topic, if you are lucky enough to find a topic you really resonate with, then you should definitely go with it. You will learn a lot and you will really enjoy the process by the end of it. Right. So that could be one. And then uh, I think the second question was, how do you uh, get started? Right. So to get started, I think uh, first year might be a little too early, even though I did start in first year, I wouldn't recommend it for others. Uh, second and third year pro are probably like a, it's like a, probably like a better time for uh, people to get into research. Now, um, how do you get involved? I think the best way is to um, approach someone who is already into research. So that could be your seniors or that could be your professors and if uh, you know you you have one of those colleges where there is no research community and there is not a, a research environment happening, then you can always go to LinkedIn and you can always go to Twitter, and you can uh, approach people there who are into research because especially on LinkedIn, people keep posting about the new publications that they're having and the things they're working on. So that is how I actually started my journey. So another thing is that before you approach someone, the best thing to do is um, have your basics clear in research. Now. Um, Research has a lot of layers to it, but the most basic thing is how do you approach a topic? How do you read, you know, do the literature review for that topic? So how do you know what has already happened in that particular topic and what can you add to it? What is the novelty of your research? Will it add to the literature? Will it actually help people once you publish it? So all those things are something that, how do you form a title? All those things are something that you need to be familiar with before you start your journey. So uh, if I talk about myself, I have done a few courses. I did a three-day workshop from public. And I've also done, so there are a lot of uh, medical societies in India, right? So they offer a few um, research courses where people who have done research come and teach you a little bit. So you can always go to them and you can always enroll for those courses. Or there's always Coursera, which offers very basic research courses that uh, people should watch first before they even start the journey. Right. So I think uh, this was very beautifully summed up that how, you know, you can get started and how you can proceed further and how you can get that zeal in that, you know, particular area. 
so now uh, ananya you know many students face very difficult to you know go and reach out to their faculty basically be, because you require someone to guide you and you know you can also be a part of say uh, in the in the contributing authors as well in their particular papers as well so do you had a particular guide or you have a particular guide and how you approach them and secondly also students want to think upon like kahan ke professor ko choose kiya jaye they should go for microbiology they should go for psm some students also have that particular doubts so what would be your suggestions to that okay so talking about my mentors i actually uh, don't have particular mentors i have guides from my college but not exactly a research mentor my mentors come from um, other colleges these these are seniors of other colleges so uh, my first mentor um, would be dr ocean puri he is uh, in turn in the in aims rishikesh right now so he has some he is someone who has held my hand through research whenever i would approach him with a doubt he would be the one to clear it out whenever i had an idea he would tell me what is wrong with it or what is right with it so i approached him through again when I, mean, i told you that i did a course through a student organization he was one of the teachers in that course and then um since i was already done with one of my papers that was not beautifully written at all i approached him to um, go through that and he helped me a lot since then till now so it just depends on if you get to know someone if you find out that someone is already into research and can help you you just need to text them just hit them up on whatsapp hit them on up on linkedin wherever you could find them and just ask them for help and if they are um, if you're lucky enough they will help you and they will guide you through the process now talking about which subject do you you know which subject you should go for so now that depends on two things one is do you have a topic in mind are you sitting in being like i want to do a research project on antimicrobial resistance to so, meko uske liye microbiology microbiology department mein jana padega so now that is easy like if you have a topic you know which uh, department to approach but when it comes to you don't know anything meko bas research start karna hai research seekhna hai main kiske paas jaau so that depends on agar tumhare um, college mein there is someone who is well established researcher who you know has a lot of publications as, as a professor and who has the time to help you out then you should go to that person and then it doesn't depend on what topic it is see if you hate a subject it doesn't uh, make sense to go in that department but if you are new to the subject like a psm for example you can go to the professors they are um, usually involved in a lot of researches and you can ask them ki um, sir my co research mein kuch nahi so if i can help you with any project that you are uh, having or if you have any topic that i can collaborate with then i can work on and could you please teach me since i'm new and i think they'll be more than happy to help you with it right right amazing so i think that was the perfect answer so ananya you know uh, many times student think that what will be the advantage of research why should i do it right so once uh, some students think that okay if you want to go for usmle or certain foreign exam then it will add in your cv but other than that someone who does not want to go but as a medical student how has research help you as a medical student and you know maybe in order to read your books more nicely or maybe develop that clinical acumen or something like that so how how would you you know define the advantages of being in research okay so yes for an exam kept apart how has research helped me is i think the first thing that research gives to you is patience so i have to talk about the fact that research is a very lengthy process it will irritate you at every step in your research where you're like okay now how do i tackle this especially when you're new at it you every single step is so new and so hard for you that it takes a very long time to finish your first paper so the first thing that i was taught throughout the process was definitely patience Yeah. Uh, apart from that when i talk about the clinical acumen i honestly have been lucky enough to work on papers that ha- that really interest me so i research on topics where uh, which is something that i know that i would want to read up on so when you read suppose 20 papers on the same topic that you're interested in you do get a lot of information on that particular topic which is not how we generally study our mbbs curriculum we go from one topic to another really fast but here you need you're doing an in-depth analysis and in-depth research of a particular topic so that really gives you a lot of satisfaction and especially in that topic you have a vast amount of knowledge compared to anyone else apart from that when you talk about um, reading books and reading um, your normal mbbs curriculum i'm not sure it uh, directly helps you that much 
but of course if you're someone interested in research you would be the kind of person who's interested in medicine in itself so you end up reading a lot more and you end up trying to find more topics and find more areas you're interested in right. so i think it works both ways you you like research you end up reading more and then you want to do research on it right right definitely so on that note also you know like you said it uh, requires a lot of patience etc so at any point of time you felt that okay this much time i am gave to it maybe it's worth it or not and secondly if someone is watching it as a second year or third year medical student how much time will he have he or she have to devote to this particular area and uh, you know uh, how they should manage it with their other hobbies or whatever skills they want okay so so the research is a lot of types of research so agar you are doing a case report for example and you have uh, suppose gone to a medicine professor and you've asked him ki sir koi interesting case hai to mujhe uske upar case report likhna sikhna hai then they will give you a report they will help you out with how to write it down and that could easily if you're starting up it could take a longer but once you're in it it might just take a week for you to completely finish that Right. But when you're talking about original study, which is what most of the students join as for ICMR, STS, for your university grants, you need to do those. In that cases, it can take a really long time because one thing is you're new at it, so you have you have to learn the procedure while you're doing it, which takes a lot of time. The other thing would be that it has to go through ethical approval first. So you have to put the proposal in. You have to learn how to make the proposal. You have to put the proposal in. The ethical committee will sit. which depends on college to college sometimes ethical committee is it very very you know it's not that frequent right and uh, once you get the proposal you have to start collecting the data then you have to get the data analyzed by you know a biostatistician or someone that can help you with that and then you have to write the manuscript and then only can you go through the publication process which again also takes very long if it's a good journal so um it is a really lengthy process that you have to go through if it's an original study but according to me you do learn the most out of it and it's the most interesting kind of study for example if you're um, it's a topic that you're really interested in you wouldn't mind reading a lot of papers or you wouldn't mind that but it can get to you at multiple times that you're like oh i just i got through that hard point ab ye fir se mere ko ek mushkil pad gayi hai now i have to learn how to do this and yeah. you know uh, with my first project that i presented as well even after i was done the entire thing i was stuck with the publication process cuz i'm like yaar how do i approve journals how do i submit my manuscript and how do i know my manuscript is right according to that journal so even after doing the whole process and even after finishing my project and the manuscript i was in that phase right so right. it can take a really long time if it's an original study but it's definitely worth it in the end the amount of satisfaction you get is brilliant apart right. from that how do you manage it's how do you manage your hobbies with mbbs right right if it's something you're interested in you will end up prioritizing it and it doesn't take that amount of time it's like one one and a half hours every day mm-hmm. so just as you give it for your other hobbies you just have to take out one one and a half hours half hours for your project and uh, it'll be done soon enough right that's amazing uh, so ananya also we know uh, got to know that you are basically selected for ccmb hyderabad as well as iisc bangalore as well so how do you you know guide medical students that what are the opportunities they have at their hand and what time should they begin so that you know they can get a particular time frame to get that thing done because someone who is starting maybe in third year might face difficulty in final year because final year itself is very hectic so what would be your suggestion and how to apply and how to go for these things okay so uh, talking about the first thing which is csi or ccmb um, medical student training program Now, in my experience, uh, C- CCMB did not look for people who were already well into research. Now, this is this entire thing is a different type of research, which is basic science research. What we generally do in medical school is clinical research. Right. So, the basic science research is for someone who is related and interested in the basic sciences aspect of research. So, here in CSM CCMB, we were taught uh, PCR and ELISA and those lab procedures. Right. So, for that, how do you get selected? would be two things one is you need to have a cv so you do need a few things that you would be um, you know you can write down on pa- on a paper so for example even your volunteering experiences and anything that you have been involved in in your medical school could help another thing which is the most important thing when it comes to ccmb 
is your statement of purpose. Now they ask you for a letter where you have to state why should they select you and why are you a good fit for them. In that, you have to um, come off as a very passionate person. You have to come off as someone who is really interested in research. And you have to be that kind of a person for them to realize that you are and to select you. Right. So CCMB only takes, I think, 20 students every year for their uh, winter internship, which oh. is what I went for in the last December. So uh, they will teach you the procedure, they will teach you the process, and they will also help you with the research guidelines and ethical ethics of research. So they don't expect you to know a lot of research already. They just expect you to have a passion for it. Right. But when it comes to IISE, I think the competition is even harder. It's uh, very difficult to get in because it's a one-month internship program and you have to work in the lab under the professor that you got selected in um, for a month and learn and help them with their research. So for that, I believe you do need to have a strong CV, but they only open it for third and final year students and interns. So they already expect you to have a base and have some amount of knowledge. Um, apart from that, you again, there is a letter of intent for IISC, so you have to show your intent that, you know, why would they select you and why would you want to do something that is not exactly MBBS related? Mm -hmm. Because again, this is a basic science research. This is more about lab techniques and uh, everything that clinicals is based on, the absolute basics, ki wo organel ke andar kya ho hai. that is what IISC deals with. So yeah. why uh, you as an MBBS student should be selected for something like that, usko clear karna padega apne letter of intent mein. So if you're uh, if you can do that, then you will get selected and you will happily have a great time. I start next month, so hopefully it'll be good. Right, right. Best wishes for your venture as well. And uh, I think this is a part of you know Ananya guiding everyone so that she can give back to the community. So now, what are your future plans with respect to research concerned, and you know how you would like to take it forward as a uh, full fledged doctor when you become so? Uh, okay. Thank you so much, first of all, sir. And uh, secondly, what are my future plans? If you're talking about with uh, research, I think I'm very interested. Like when I started, it was definitely very hard. And there were many days when I'm like, why am I even doing this? Should I just drop it? Mm -hmm. But I think now when I understand most of the process, I am very interested in it. And whenever I get a new topic that I can research on, or you know, a friend or someone that I know approaches me that, oh, we can work on this together. I think I get very excited about the whole process and I really do want to work on it now. So in terms of research, I hope I do get to like work on a lot more papers in the next two years. Right. And when it comes to anything else, I'm just, uh, if you're talking about like meet PG and all, I am not very sure. I'm still considering my options and keeping it open for now. Right, right, right. So I think that's good uh, to, you know, uh, be open for every opportunity that knocks your door. And it also becomes very essential for, you know, uh, someone like you to, you know, uh, stay open minded. So now, uh, guys, uh, when we, you know, uh, try to sum up the entire thing that she have told right now, I think one would be to, uh, first of all, get clear that why you want to do and uh, it should be something which is your inner calling rather than some other like, you know, maybe uh, dejo dekha wo kar liya. So it should not be like that. And then second is you should uh, go for, you know, seeking for a mentor. So I think uh, Ananya is also available on LinkedIn. So you can obviously reach out to her, post this session if you have any other doubts. And then third would be, you know, gradually the process uh, happens and then there are many opportunities as well. So anything you, which you would, you would like to add on Ananya at this point of time that maybe I have not asked and you wish ki ye cheez pata hona chahiye. Uh, so I think when it uh, comes down to it, if you are watching this video, I'm sure that you've considered research in your um, MBBS years. So if you've done that, I really do think you should go a little more beyond that and learn about the process. And you should definitely approach people who are in it to get your doubts cleared because you will definitely have a million doubts throughout the process. So apart from that, I think you've covered everything very nicely. And if anyone wants to reach out to me, they can reach out to me on Instagram as well. I go by another underscore medico and I'm happy to help. Right. So I think this was a very, uh, you know, crisp and concise video explaining everything that you need to know with respect to research. And obviously, since it's a continuous journey, so it would be better if you continuously follow up with your mentor. So thank you so much, Ananya. I wish you all the best for, you know, your upcoming internship as well as the many more opportunities that will be there. 
and we hope for a second part of the video when you are you know more accomplished in your field and you have some new experiences to share so that we can surely discuss for sure sir i hope that's soon enough thank you so much for having me again thank you uh, thank you everyone for watching this video you can also connect with her on all her uh, handles which will be mentioned in the description and if you have any other query kindly comment below thank you so much stay safe stay healthy